God of darkness, now we stand before the night. As the shadows stretch and deepen, come and make our darkness bright. All creation still is groaning for the dawning of your might. When the sun of peace and justice fills the earth with radiant light. My friends, we gather today in the name of a God who creates us, a God who saves us, and a God who makes us one. Amen. The grace and peace of our God be with you all. And also with you, Jeff. Thank you. Today we gather uh, acknowledging our need for God's love. And as we gather from wherever we are in the world, from, as we gather as one people around this one altar, this one medium, the gospel asks us this. Do you think Jesus ever had to check his privilege? Do you think Jesus ever had to check his privilege? We know that we are privileged to be here. The luxury and gift of this time with one another and in special communion with our God. And so we acknowledge that we are unworthy of all of this love, but we trust in the infinite mercy that is our God's. You are the one who calls us into ever becoming more and more like you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. You are the one who calls us out of our own darkness into the light of a bigger world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy on us. You are the one who asks us to continue to grow in your love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. And may the Almighty One have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you all things which are good, which is beyond all we have ever seen. And fill our hearts, then we pray, with the warmth of your love. So that loving you and seeing you in all things and above all things, 
we may even now get some sense of the fullness of your love, which fulfills and surpasses our every human desire. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of your Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. and bless us and let your face shed its light upon us so will your ways be known upon earth and all nations learn your salvation O God, O God let all the nations pray Let the nations be glad and shout for joy. With uprightness you rule the peoples. You guide the nations on earth. O God, O God, let all the nations praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God still give us a blessing. That God be revered by all the ends of the earth. O God, O God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I glorify my ministry in order to make my own people jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? The gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient, in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord.
words, Lord, our spirit and life. My friends, the love of God be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away. She keeps disturbing and shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only, only to the lost sheep of Israel. But the woman came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus answered, woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done then for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. My friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think the word... The words, the phrase, check your privilege, is a little out of vogue these days. It's just so 2019, isn't it? So old-fashioned. You know, maybe you don't like it, maybe you're tired of it, maybe you feel it accuses you or somebody else of, of not having a, a right to say something, even though they should have a right, free speech and all. But even if you're tired of it, or even if we don't like the way it's always been used, I think that phrase, check your privilege, does offer us something valuable these days. I mean, there are some of us, white men especially, but all of us in some way, almost anyway, who have some privileged group, some group, maybe a large group or a nation even, that we, we carry a little more weight in than somebody else. We have a little bit more of an experience. So when we say, or we hear someone say to us, hey, check your privilege, we don't always have to hear that as if like it's some criticism of what we think or who we are, something we have to feel bad or guilty about, we can just hear that maybe our perspective, which we think is the right perspective, isn't as big or broad as we think. By, as a, I mean, let's face it, a white dude, uh, pre, grew up pretty middle class. If I see someone who's maybe an immigrant or a person of color and poor and jobless or homeless, and I say, why don't they just get a job? See, that reveals my privilege. It's always been easy for me to get a job. I've had to work hard for them. I've had to work hard at them, for sure. But because of my parents and my parents' parents, I've always had opportunities to get work or get education. And so if I don't check my privilege, I might think that everybody has the same opportunities as I do. But whether you like the phrase or not, I'm going into all this depth because like it or not, it's exactly what Jesus had to do in today's gospel. Jesus, you know, the Savior, he had to check his privilege and it took a foreign woman to help him do it. You see, Jesus came in there thinking he knew the answer. He had this great relationship with God. He, I'm sure he's been talking to God every day, all day, right? He's, he's God's only son. And, and he knew he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He knew it. He'd been proclaiming it. He'd been living it. 
He was sure. And so when this, with, when this other person, this other, called out to him for help, he didn't even answer her. When she persisted, he said, look, you're not part of what I'm called to do. I know. Finally, he said, look, you're like a dog to me. You're less than human to me. He othered her. We don't really know what he was thinking. Maybe he was just thinking he was too busy. Maybe he was thinking she wasn't really telling the truth. Maybe he was thinking, well, look, again, she should go back to somebody in her own land. Who knows what he was thinking, but we know, we know what he did. And what he did was he ignored her. He othered her. He called her a name less than human. And then, and then, after all that, he saw her. He looked through generations of bigotry and prejudice that we know was rife in Jesus' time about the Canaanites. He saw her and her faith and her beauty and her love for her daughter through, through hundreds of years, through decades of animosity and hatred and tell, talking about how they were idolaters and didn't, weren't worthy of God's love and were foreigners and were other. He saw through all that in the miracle that is today's gospel story just for the loving mom, the desperate, loving mom in need of help that she was. He saw her. And when he saw her, not only did it bring about healing for that woman's daughter, not only did it empower that woman in her voice, but it changed him. Jesus had this great way of both sticking to his mission, but also changing and growing. Jesus had this great way, at least it seems in this gospel passage, and in Matthew's gospel especially, of both being true to who he was at all times and becoming more true to that person, growing in his ministry and growing in his living out of this faith that he had. Somehow, Jesus found a way, a humility, a certainty that God loved him so much that he could be wrong and still be loved, that he could grow and still be true. Jesus found that, that brought about an actual concrete healing in that moment, and it gave power, it gave authority, it gave a place for a, for a foreign woman's voice who had no privilege. Jesus learned from someone who his culture had gave no value at all. Can we, just, can we just soak that in for a second? How different would our world be? How different would our home or our families be, our workplaces, if we, realizing that we were keeping God's love away, could just pivot and, and, and allow God to be bigger than we thought God was? And allow love to be more powerful, more present than we thought love could be. Instead of, at least if you're like me, putting up our big defenses and grabbing our cliches and grabbing our reasons and our rationales and all these histories and traditions we had to explain why God's love isn't quite for you. Sorry. But Jesus, even though he was tempted to that, he found a way through it. And he saw that woman for the equal human being she was. It changed him. And for all we know, it changed history. Because he saw that woman, her child was healed. Her voice was given authority. And now, then we see this, this great uh, universalism that overtook our faith uh, through Peter and Paul and the early disciples, the early church. Would that have ever gotten there if Jesus hadn't found the space, the courage, the humility right then to check his privilege, to check his assumptions, to realize and see through the bigotry of generations into another person who had the same dignity and love and value and longings that he did. Jesus checked his privilege. I wonder, I wonder if you and I, I think about that, where, where, where are we privileged? If you're, if you're, I mean, you know, like me, white, male, then you're pretty privileged everywhere, at least in this country. 
Now maybe somebody says, oh, well, yeah, but you're gay, so you're not as privileged, you're kind of a little bit of a subgroup here. Fair enough. But mostly, people act on what they see. But even if you're not part of this great big privileged class, everybody, everybody is privileged somewhere. Maybe in their family, or their friend group, or at work, or on the street. It's a place all of us go to feel in, to feel privileged. And that means, at least often, usually, somebody else is feeling out. Somebody else is left out of that in. Somebody else is othered. Today we get this great example of Jesus who saw through the othering, who saw through the generations of, of treating someone as less and validated their voice as just as important as his and saw their perspective as more correct than his was. Where is that for us? Where can I find that kind of humility? Where can I find that kind of energy in my life when I'm so comfortable in my privilege? Where can I find someone else's voice that needs to teach me how big God is? Where can I find someone else's voice that deserves to be validated in my world, but I haven't had the courage or the vision to do that yet? The Son of God checked his privilege and acknowledged he was wrong and that this foreign woman who had no privilege was right, that her perspective had a truth that his did not. It's not that Jesus didn't have truth in his perspective. It's not that Jesus didn't have value in what he was thinking and doing. It's just that it was bigger. I'm not saying your perspective's wrong. I'm not saying your status quo that you fight for has no value in it, or that you haven't worked for what you've earned, or, 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 or really been a part of uh, a struggling for what you've got, what your, the privileges you've gotten. I'm just saying it's not the whole picture. And if we're not careful, if you and I are not careful, we hold on so tightly to the privileges that we have that we won't let somebody else uh, also have them, which means, in effect, they're other, they are less, that we treat them, we believe somewhere deep in our hearts, they're just that little bit less worthy of the same dignity, worthy of the same respect, same place at the table as us. You know, it's funny. Uh, we heard that beautiful words in the first reading today from Isaiah, written about 500 years before Jesus. And Isaiah says, prophesies, my house will be a house of prayer for all people. Jesus certainly knew those words. He probably heard those words dozens of times. He probably read those words. He probably had them memorized. And yet, he didn't see the truth of those words until a privilege less foreign-born person to him used her voice to show him how deeply those words ran. Isn't that amazing? How the Spirit of God worked in Jesus in that moment and in this foreign woman to speak a truth that the Word of God had spoken 500 years before, but we hadn't seen. Isn't that like us a little bit? 250 years ago, almost, Thomas Jefferson wrote, all men are created equal. Even now, even today, we're still trying to figure out what that means. Even today, we're still trying to live into that truth that we say we believe. And it is people, largely, it's all of us, but it has largely been people of color, women, who have come out and tried to show us that by their exclusion of that, we are selling ourselves short of our own vision. That's the irony, isn't it? That if we don't check our privilege, we don't live into the privilege that we believe we've tried to set into the, for the whole world. Today, the very one, Jesus the Christ, was confronted by someone who asked him to check his privilege. And a voiceless woman from a foreign land trusted her voice enough to speak out. And the world is different today because of his humility and their courage. The gospel tells us very clearly how Jesus responded 
and how the Canaanite woman responded. Maybe then, maybe then the gospel question is not, did Jesus check his privilege? But how will we respond when we have to check ours? My friends from all over the world, we have heard God's word. So now we respond in faith. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator Almighty, of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the gospel reminds us that God's love is bigger than we could ever imagine. And so then it is with great trust and great hope that we open our hearts to our God now with our needs and our prayers. Our response to the prayer of the faithful this evening is, O God, receive our prayer. That believers and non-believers may work and talk together healing the wounds that prejudice and rejection have inflicted upon us all. We pray, O oh God, oh God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. That people may cease to label and exclude one another as foreigners, as different, as other, choosing instead to rejoice in one another's gifts. We pray, O oh God, oh God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer that immigrants and refugees may find from us a ready welcome, transforming strangers into valued neighbors. We pray, O oh God, oh God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. That we who find healing at the table of God may welcome others, gladly drawing into this household any and all who might seek Jesus. We pray, O oh God, oh God, receive, receive our prayer. For those in our community who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit, especially Father Jerry, Vic, Mary Beth, Jim, Mary, Karen, Adam, Edward, and those we mention now by name. May the healing hand of God touch each of these and guide their caregivers, we pray. O oh God, receive our prayer. For all those in our community who have died, especially from our own community, Stephen Alderton, John Long, Father Frank Bober, Maurice Lapierre, Joan Perrin, Bob Brown, Justice Lafayette, those we mention now by name. May they all be at the great banquet with God, we pray. Oh God, oh God receive, receive our prayer. For what else shall we pray this evening? We pray. Oh God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Source of all love, we cry out to you as a woman in need, we cry out to you in our helplessness without knowing your answer. And yet, 
We trust that you hear us, that you see us, that you will heal us, because we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, pray with me. Pray that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God who is the all-loving one. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's church. Receive our gifts, O love, by which is brought about a glorious exchange that by offering what you have given us, we may come to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The love of God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, the Almighty One, for all you do in the world and through Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts and prepare us to be reconciled. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek the way of peace together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O God, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord and alienation change to mutual respect and seeing. Therefore, we give you ceaseless thanks in the choirs of angels, and we cry out to you with majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Therefore, O all-loving God, we bless you through Jesus the Christ who comes in your name. He is the word of God that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is given to us. 
when we had turned from you on account of our sinfulness, you brought us back to be reconciled, O God, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through Jesus, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, as we celebrate the reconciliation that Christ has given us, we ask you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at table, he took bread into his hands, gave you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessed your mercy, and gave the chalice to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, this memorial of the death and resurrection of Jesus, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have given us, this sacrifice of reconciliation. Eternal God, we humbly ask you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously give us his own very Spirit, who takes away everything that keeps us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. May he keep us all in communion with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, all the bishops, and all your people. Just as you gather us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. O God, the all-loving one, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Because we know God looks upon us with eyes filled with love. We pray. Yeah. 
us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever, now and evermore. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith. And graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our God be with you always. And also with you, Jeff. Let us now offer to each other uh, in our hearts or if they're in our homes, wherever they are, some sign of God's own peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who comes to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to this banquet and to the mission. And the Lord, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. Be healed. Let us pray. Source of life, we are made sharers of Christ through these sacraments. As we humbly ask your mercy that we might be conformed to Jesus' image on earth and so we may one day share the joy of eternal life with him who lives and reigns in you forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the love of God be with you. And also with you, Jeff. Thank you. May the Almighty One, a God bless you, a God who creates us, a God who saves us, and a God who makes us one. Amen. My friends, this liturgy is ended. Wherever you are, 
Please go in peace. Thanks be to God.